academic team that pull this together as well as of the IT department. The eminent speakers who are here to enlighten all the delegates throughout the day. The 650 people who have progressively decided to register here. Thank you all for your attendance and for this opportunity to speak to you. I'm very happy to be in Pramutur. Uh, as many have pointed out, it is the hub of economic activity, of education, of innovation. Uh, I have both personal and professional reasons to be here. I'm frequently here. In fact, sometimes I used to joke asking whether my constituency is Madurai or Pramutur because I come so often to Pramutur. But I think I'm back again in a couple of weeks for a PSG Trust annual day. So, partly for personal reasons, partly because it's such an important part of our economy, both in my old role in finance and in my current role in technology. I come here a lot. This conference is very special to us. This is the 57th version uh, being run this time in Kamuto. Uh, but I want to give you a little bit of background. Uh, the theme of this conference actually echoes our Chief Minister's uh, statement back in 2021 when we established the Economic Advisory Council for the State of Tamil Nadu. In the maiden address to that council, the Chief Minister said that his ambition was to make Tamil Nadu the global capital for human talent, not the Indian, not the Asian, but the global capital. I think written, if you read into that, what he was already implying is that our Tamil diaspora is significantly impactful in almost every sector all over the world already. And the sheer scale of our population, almost 8 crore people, plus the high enrollment ratios that we have, ought to make us the premier source of human capital. But if you look at uh, where we are today, there are many positives we can talk about, uh, about our low gross enrollment ratio, about our economic platform, about our inclusion, about our national ranking, the uh, Rishri Vatsram brought it up in many colleges, etc our infrastructure and connectivity. These are all positives. But the reality is that we are not creating enough employment for all of our graduates here in Tamil Nadu, nor are they all able to achieve their full potential in the global market. And the biggest gap, though there may be many contributors to that, the biggest gap is this skilling gap, is the gap between the skills that are being imparted in the educational institutions and those that are needed by the economy. Now, if we didn't have so many institutions and we didn't have 52% roughly gross enrollment, we would say it's just that we don't have infrastructure, we don't have people who are able to go to college or the means. But when you have everybody going and still we are not reaching full employment, then there are some structural issues. This is a problem that is not new to me. Uh, I had the great luxury, though on the one hand, with people like the TVS family or with uh, many in Kwamuto, or even with the family of uh, Mike Murlinger, though I can celebrate many generations of friendship. In fact, I spent most of my career overseas in economies and markets which were much more efficient in terms of labor placement. And so, during my main speech in the assembly in 2016, when I was an opposition member, at that point, I suggested several steps to be taken to improve the ratio of placement, given that we already had high levels of education or enrollment. It's not often that one gets to work on a problem that one has actually understood and defined. So in that sense, I'm very uh, grateful for the rare opportunity to be part of the solution uh, as the Minister for IT, the department in which the ICT Academy runs. 
Now you may all know that uh, the ICT Academy, Guru Kumar Nayak, who was the first CEO, started 2008, I think, um, was not the only one of its kind. It had partial government of India support. Many states uh, were given the opportunity to start something similar. Ours has been spectacularly successful in the sense that I think of all the ICT academies that are government sponsored or supported, Tamil Nadu is by far the best in the country and we have offices in nine other states outside Tamil Nadu. We have 50 London colleges or so as members across the country and I have attended these bridge conferences in Delhi, in Bangalore, in Hyderabad and I think I'm going to Pune later this week. So on the one hand we are very happy as a department, as the home of the ICT Academy of Tamil Nadu that we do this for the country. At the end we are one country, we have to raise the average productivity of all workers for the country to benefit. At some other sense, I have been very clear that 60% of my city academy's efforts should be directed within Tamil Nadu as its primary mandate and we should do more and more with institutions across all cities, towns, wherever we can to bridge this gap between the skills that recruiters and the economy is looking for and the curriculum and the training, extracurricular training that is being provided in the educational institutions. Uh, we are running quite late and it's almost tea time, so I won't speak for very long, but I'll just wind up with a few thoughts. One, we are at an inflection point as far as the information technology and related services industry is concerned. Though some may argue that there is no such thing as true artificial intelligence, what we call G, general intelligence. The quality of the algorithms and much more so the ability to store and process almost infinite amounts of data and the access to computing capacity on demand as opposed to having to invest hundreds of millions of dollars each because of the cloud model possibly is setting us on a 20-year trajectory for a new AI or algorithm-driven natural language-based era in technology. That is an inflection point. That is not where the trajectory has been so far. And as all inflection points, while it brings risk and disruption potential, it also creates opportunity. We in Tamil Nadu in many ways have been punching below our weight uh, for various reasons, some structural, some financial, some more societal. But uh, as the Chief Minister said during our Imagine conference earlier this year in Chennai, one of the reasons he asked me to come to this portfolio was to bring the kinds of changes that I had brought when I had been in finance for a couple of years. So I am happy to say that at least in the initial periods we are starting to see big difference. Last year in Chennai, the Class A office space rental went up from the usual 5 million square feet to 11 million square feet. Uh, we have seen many more indicators of new interests, new GCCs, new IT platforms, new ITES platforms. I have gone and inaugurated two or three AI-based entities, Chennai platforms, including Unifor, including Annalise. So I think we are in a very exciting time. In the case of ICT, we used to get 30 to 40 crores worth of new um, donations and uh, engagement contracts a year. I would say this year we are on track for 100 crores probably. We, we are going to greatly expand our reach, both through CSR funds for generic training, for specific training based on platforms that the companies themselves like MongoDB will pay for and then for uh, employers looking for trained employees. So I think we are able to greatly scale this up and as people have suggested here today, we'll even look at additional models. In that sense, I would say though governments have core responsibilities the history of our country, in fact, the history of democracy suggests that 
most governments cannot do everything alone. We need significant partnership with the private, some of it will be quasi-government entities, some of it will be dedicated public sector enterprises like ICT Academy, some of it will be interactions of public-private partnerships. But whatever the model is, uh, we have to find a way for government and society to work together. Uh, governments are a vital component but are not comprehensive, cannot achieve everything that uh, they need to do. In fact, in this very hall, a few years ago, I addressed a big Rotary conference and I made the same point that there is a significant role for NGOs to do granular education, uh, execution and ensure quality outcomes that sometimes is hard for the government to do. So, with those thoughts, I'd like to conclude by wishing all of you a very productive and uh, enlightening day. All of you in this room are a vital part of our Chief Minister's vision, not just of the scale or size of the economy, but of the increasing employability, employment and personal progress of our youth and their families. So, I thank you for your work and I wish you a good future. Thank you very much.